Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Dr. Woon, a cardiologist at Timberland Medical Center, Kuching. Uh, glad to have you with me this afternoon. So I'm going to talk about uh, one of the big topic of the heart disease, which is heart failure. Uh, I'm aware that um, they are a part of an audience who do not understand English. So uh, after the English version, I'll try to uh, uh, present again in the Mandarin versions. So feel free to ask if you have any questions. So what is heart failure? So heart failure is actually uh, a medical condition where the heart couldn't pump enough blood to supply enough oxygen throughout the body. So uh, in other words, uh, when the heart is weak, so it couldn't function as normal. So in the reality, in the real life, uh, actually uh, more than 26 million population in the world actually suffering from heart failure. And uh, a big majority of them are actually underdiagnosed. And throughout years, it actually remained the number one cause of uh, admission to the hospital throughout the world. And statistics shows that um, in five, every five uh, people, actually one of them is actually suffering from a heart failure. In 2017 alone, uh, there are more than uh, 1 million people actually uh, uh, contribute to the hospital stay uh, who are suffering from heart failure. And the total cost that spent in the treatment of heart failure is actually more than 11 billion. As you can see from the slide, uh, not just the money that been spent in the treatments and the quality of life that uh, uh, that the patient with heart failure has been suffering actually uh, is uh, much affected and uh, more than half of the patients with heart failure actually die within five years from the time of diagnosis so let's talk about heart failure so basically heart failure can be divided into two categories uh, first one would be when the patient presented with acute uh, situation, we call it acute heart failure. And another uh, category is when the patient had a pre-existing heart condition and they gradually develop heart failure symptoms. So we will get back to that later. So what is acute heart failure? So acute heart failure is the when the patients are uh, a normal adult uh, with a normal heart function when they suddenly uh, develop a heart failure symptom such as shortness of breath, a swelling over the lower limbs, you know, couldn't lie flat uh, during sleep. Or oh, this is the condition where we call uh, the patient have the acute attack. So we, call, we, we categorize in, it into acute heart failure. By far the common cause of uh, acute heart failure is, we call it ischemic heart failure. In the, in the general saying, we say that it's due to heart attack. Which, con which is due, uh, uh, composed of the major cases of the acute heart failure. And other causes of acute heart failure, for example, uh, when the patient had a uncontrolled hypertension, also uh, due to a valve failure, and with the genetic causes such as cardiomyopathy, in which that the muscle of the heart is thickened due to uh, a genetic uh, composure. And so when uh, patients uh, develop an acute heart failure, when they uh, did not seek medical treatment in time, so even though uh, after that they get hospitalization, they get treated, and then they were discharged. But a portion part of the heart muscle actually uh, are still uh, jeopardized, and their heart functions uh, did not return to normal after the treatments. So this, this type of patient, they tend to develop chronic heart failure in which that the heart function did not recover. So uh, if um, uh, at any time they do not, uh, the, the birth patient did not control well, you know, they, they might, uh, 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 the heart failure symptom might just continue persist throughout years. That's why they, they do have a reduced quality of life. That's the condition we call it the chronic heart failure in which that the patient have to live with it every day. So this picture shows you that uh, the commonest causes of heart failure. As you can see from here, uh, in the left top uh, uh, corner, it mentioned that coronary artery disease. So what is coronary artery disease? So in layman, usually uh, when the patient uh, presented with heart attack, 
which means that when there is a one or more of the coronary artery is suddenly blocked by a clot or by a plug so they have a myocardial infarctions which is heart attack so this is a, a, a contribute to the big portion of uh, the reason of heart failure so the patient when have a, a ischemic heart disease coronary artery disease they tend to have part of the muscle uh, 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 jeopardized and then they develop the heart failure so another causes such as a high blood pressure or genetic causes such as cardiomyopathy or even uh, any of the valve failure in the heart they may contribute to heart failure so how do we know that uh, we actually had a heart failure? So these are the commonest symptoms that you can check or you can ask your doctors when you uh, do have one or more of them. The commonest uh, symptoms that occur in patients with heart failure, such as soreness of breath, they may earlier, uh, the earlier sign of when they come out is when they develop soreness of breath, when they're minimal exertion, for example, walking upstairs. You know, this is uh, maybe the earlier symptom that came out. Huh? Also, they have a chronic coughing or when they hear the wheeze at night, particular, or when they lie down. Or when they realize that actually the lower limbs, you know, uh, been swell for a certain period of time. Or they easily get tired, lightheaded, or they may feel loss of appetite, you know, and also feel confused and impact of uh, the, the cognitive functions such as thinking. Or sometimes they do feel that the heart rate you know uh, get pretty fast more than 100 beat per minute so these are the symptoms that they may you, you may need to be away and see your uh, cardiologist when you develop any of the symptoms so what's the difference between uh, heart attack and heart failure so but like I mentioned earlier on heart attack usually is the, is the condition that where we set sudden onset you know, uh, usually we said, okay, uh, the patient have a sudden onset of chest discomfort or sudden onset of giddiness, nausea, sweating. So usually they indicate part of the artery, the coronary artery has blocked. So that uh, what we call heart attack. So usually it's the emergency condition is uh, that the patient need to seek medical treatment immediately. You know? They may have a low blood pressure you know, uh, sonos of breath during the time of heart attack. On the other hand, uh, heart failure is the consequences from other conditions such as heart attack. So when the patient uh, had a heart attack and he or she did not seek medical treatment immediately or in time, so the heart function may get weaker and weaker. So eventually, it will develop heart failure symptoms such as, you know, lower limb swelling, couldn't lie flat, uh, when they sleep, need two or three pillows, or they even feel palpitations, irregular heartbeats. So these are the conditions that we call uh, heart failure. So heart failure usually is the consequences from other heart conditions such as heart attack. So what we can do when the patients uh, come to the clinic, you know, come to see me in the clinic and say, "Hey, doctor, I got the leg swellings," you know, whether this is heart failure or not. So there are a few things that I can do uh, to 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 check whether the leg swellings or whether the soreness of breath of the patient is actually due to the heart or not. Because as, as we know, lower limb swellings can be due to kidney failure as well, for example. So there are a few particular tests that uh, we can do. I can do for the patient. First, I can just do a simple blood test, you know, to see whether that this patient uh, is in heart failure. There are particular blood tests, the marker that I can check not just to see whether the patient is in heart failure also i can potentially see that whether there's any artery of the heart that is blocked that contribute to the heart failure so this is very important and secondly i can perform an ecg to see whether there's any uh, uh, changes in the ecg uh, indicate that the patient had the heart attack also i can perform a simple chest x-ray and to see whether there's any enlarged heart and whether there's any fluid accumulate in the lung and uh, also the next step i can perform an echocardiogram which is very specific that to, to see the the assess the heart functions to look at the valve to see whether there's any thicken of the, uh, the heart muscle 
or in the overall uh, whether there's any swelling of the heart. So these are the things that I can do for the patient when the patient you know have uh, uh, developed any of the symptoms that suggestive of heart failure. So what are the risk factors for heart failure? All right, we know that you know heart heart attack, blockage of the artery, so they con can contribute to the heart failure. So what are other risk factors? As we can see here, it's quite a number of them. Huh? We know that uh, uh, low socioeconomic status, patient with hypertension, obese, or history of heart attack, uncontrolled diabetes, kidney failure, even certain drugs such as chemo drugs or some uh, painkiller can eventually contribute to uh, heart failure. In particular, obesity, which is uh, one of the uh, uh, issues nowadays uh, in a Asian countries. So, what has it to do uh, with obesity? Obesity, uh, uh, the wet history in the past can actually predict your future heart failure risk. Oh, we know that. You can see from here. Compared with two persons, the one on the left hand side who is obese at the age of 20 years old, we can actually predict that if the, the wet remains the same throughout the next few years, the patient with obesity at the age of 20 years old actually had a three times increased risk to develop heart failure in future. So you can see that uh, how important to control your weight uh, throughout the life. Also, obesity actually can link to uh, diabetes. So we know that uh, when a patient has a obese obesity, not just it will increase the insulin resistance also will affect the glucose intolerance and eventually will develop diabetes. Also, patients with obesity can have a borderline high blood pressures and have increased the chances of inflammation of the artery, also will increase the chances of getting a cholesterolemia. So all this will eventually lead to cardiovascular disease. The patient may have a high, will have higher chances of develop heart attack and also eventually develop heart failure and also sudden death. And to control the blood pressure is equally important throughout uh, our daily life. The American Heart Association has uh, revised the blood pressure control saying that at any age, the, blood, the systolic blood pressure should be controlled at the level of 120 millimeter mercury or less and for the diastolic blood pressure, it should be controlled at 80 millimeter mercury or less. Any number that beyond that should be considered at prehypertension or high blood pressure. And if you realize that your blood pressure falls outside this category, you should seek doc uh, doctor's advice. And uh, the, the best is to adjust the lifestyle and initiate treatment as soon as possible. And also, Glucose control is equally important uh, to, to have a normalized uh, blood uh, sugar. If you have a, a blood sugar check, you should target your fasting blood sugar uh, at less than uh, 5.4 minimal per liter. So we have talked about the risk factors. We talked about uh, what is about heart failure. So how about the treatment wise? Of course, for the treatment-wise, we can be divided into uh, drug medications, treatments, and also uh, in certain cases when uh, the medical treatment fail, we will have to perform certain uh, interventional treatments to uh, treat the heart failure. Of course, when we perform some procedure, not just to treat the heart failure, like I said, heart failure is always the consequences of from other heart disease, it can be because due to the uh, blockage of the artery. So sometimes I can perform coronary angiogram or even angioplasty to unblock the blocked artery in the heart. So then to uh, to uh, restore the blood flow in the coronary. So in the we hope that uh, with the procedure they can improve the blood flow to the to the muscle, and uh, so in in the long run will improve the heart function. And also in certain patients when uh, the heart failure 
is due to the uh, uh, irregular rhythms, then uh, we can potentially put in the pacemaker or ICD or even CRT device for the patients. So why is it important to uh, to comply with the medical the medication that been prescribed by the doctors? So I would like to show you this very single very important chart that. Uh, so that you have a rough idea why is it so important to comply with your medication. So this is a progress of the, someone who has been diagnosed with heart failure. So you can see on the left hand side, okay, uh, the arrow there saying that there's a beginning of the heart failure symptom onset. So that your doctor diagnosed that you're having heart failure, it might be due to the, to the blockage of the artery. So the, the, your, your heart failure symptoms started from there. So throughout your lifetime you may have you know um, multiple emissions to the hospital because you have a, a you know you, you have a recurrent symptoms that you couldn't sleep at night couldn't lie flat so you go and see doctor doctor said that okay you got the fluid accumulate in your leg in the lung so you need to be get admitted and your your heart function uh, uh, uh deteriorate a little bit that time so after a few days in the in the hospital, you've been given an injection to clear the fluid, everything. So all right. And important to see that throughout all emissions, when your heart condition gets better and your fluid is being cleared by the doctors, by the injections, but your heart function did not would not go back to the initial step. It's important to understand that, right? So you remain stable after you discharge from the ward and out of the blue, you know, you do not comply with the medication again, you drink too much water and you got le the leg swells again and you get admitted again. And every time when you get admitted, when your legs swell, which means that you're putting more pressure on your heart because of your heart getting weaker. So even though the doctor give you some injection to clear the fluids, you know, uh, when even though it's dry, before you get you get you can get discharged, your heart function did not get back to the initial step again. So you can see that every time when you when you get yourself in acute failure again, get fluid accumulation again, even though you were treated, you were discharged home, but the heart function continue to deteriorate every time you get swell. So it's very important to understand that. So this, these are the other risk factors that uh, we, we should be aware of uh, apart from the one that I mentioned just now. For example, you have uh, excess uh, alcohol consumptions or you, you, know, uh, you smoke a lot. Or those uh, uh, patients who have uh, kidney problems or they, can, they consume too much salt. These are the patients that are uh, also uh, considered as a, a risky group of people that develop, uh, will develop heart failure in future. Right, so when we're talking about um, uh, a treatment uh, options for the heart failure, it's also very important that to prevent us from getting into heart failure, getting into trouble. So let's come to the lifestyles. So the balance in the nutrition, uh, taking much vegetable, fruits, whole grains are very important to keep our heart uh, healthy and minimize the processed meat or sweetened drinks that's very important and also cut down your cigarette i'm sure that when you go and see doctors you know by any means your doctor will, will ask you to quit smoking no, not just for your heart so for your lung for general the, the health or well-being also you need to cut uh, cut down your, your your cigarette and also the study has shown that uh, you need to do uh, the weekly exercise or at least 150 minutes of the moderate intensity uh, activity such as bridge walk huh? so 150 minutes bridge walk uh, for 30 minutes for five days a week that will be uh, enough for you or if you jog you know you, you just need 75 minutes uh, per week that will be enough for you to keep your heart to your heart healthy also important factors that may contribute to heart problem is the stress level huh? study has shown that uh, those uh, uh, the professional who had a high stress level, they tend to develop a heart problem in future. And this is very good for you to self check your heart condition, whether or not that you do have a heart failure symptoms. You know, uh, you have a new onset, shortness of breath, 
or whether or not that you actually uh, not it not 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 that you know your daily physical activity been uh, been uh, uh, getting lower and lower you easily get tired or whether you get the new swelling in your legs or you whether you have a, a you know slowly gaining weight without increasing your appetite all these things that should actually alert you that you know you got you should go and see doctors so if none of them that's good keep it up so like I mentioned just now, if you do have those symptoms, when it just started, it may be just in a minor uh, degree. So go and see your, doc your doctor as soon as possible, huh? especially you feel that, you know, you've been uh, getting so much of breath recently, uh, even climbing up two flights of staircase, or you couldn't lie flat at night, you need two or three pillows to rest your head up. So that might be a sign that indicate your heart is getting weaker, that makes you uh, couldn't lie flat so go and see your doc doctors if you had those symptoms and when you have this uh, sim when the symptom getting worse you know uh, you uh, even sitting at rest sleeping at night will make you sonos of breath or these are the things that uh, uh, will, 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 be, will, be, will alert you that you know you might need to go and see a doctor immediately before anything uh, happen so in conclusion, uh, these are the things that you need to do uh, to, to, to prevent uh, things to get worse. Firstly, uh, in prevention, to maintain a healthy lifestyle is very important. Uh, uh, regular exercise, diet control, you know, uh, uh, reduce the stress level, uh, that's very important. And you do, if you do have uh, certain symptoms, uh, for example, chest discomfort, sonos of breath, Go and see your doctor early. Early detection is always the key uh, to the success treatments. That's very important regardless of any disease. And when, you, when a doctor suspects that you do have some things, go for early treatments. When the early treatments is always contribute to the early success rate of the treatment. That's very impo important. So when you have, uh, uh, when you, your doctor put you on certain medication, let's say uh, I open up your artery with a stand and you need to be on anti blood alert and uh, cholesterol medication, do comply with the, with the medication. If you do develop any of the side effects, which is very common, sometimes you get a gastric, sometimes you get lightheaded, sometimes you get giddiness from the medication, do not stop the medication yourself. Go and see your doctor, you know, discuss with your doctors, you know, see any other substitution that can be, can replace your current medications. And after that, you need to have a regular follow-up, you know, uh, because your medication will be adjusted from time to time. Your doctor may need to perform that, you see, whether uh, step up medication or step down according to your heart conditions. So if you have any questions, you can always drop by at my clinic or contact me through the phone or email so i'll be more than happy to uh to get back to you All right so so with that i thank you uh, for your attention so i'll try to uh uh present the slide again with uh with uh, mandarin versions 大家好, uh, 我是, uh, 温启言, 心脏专科医生, 目前在, uh, 金宝林医药中心, so, 很高兴今天下午可以和大家分享那当然心脏衰竭它可以是其他原因造成的那等一下我会告诉大家那在现实中呢全世界有很大部分的人口他们受到了心脏衰竭他们的影响所以他们的生活品质不是特别好那根据那一个调查大概在每五人当中就会有
所花费的费用呢，大概都超过了十一比连，这个是 US d o l l a r 啊，这是在二零一七年的时候。那在统计的显示呢，有超过一半的病患，心脏衰竭的病患，他们从被诊断患上心脏衰竭，那的五年之内呢，他们都会不幸的去世。所以你可以想象到，呃，当一个病患他被诊断心脏衰竭呢，他大概在未来五年里面，他有五十八天会呃不幸呃离世，所以这是一个很严重的的一个心脏情况。那心脏衰竭的分类大概我们可以分成两种，一种就是急性心脏衰竭，那另外一种就是慢性心脏衰竭。那什么是急性心脏衰竭呢？急性的意思就是说。突然间发生，那它可以是呃其他的原因，所以造成它的呃心脏的 pump failure， 它就突然间心脏就突然间变得很弱了，没有办法呃 pump 出足够的氧气给全身身体使用，那就是我们呃称它为急性的心脏衰竭。啊，急性心脏衰竭最常见的原因就是呃我们所谓的心脏病发作，就是心肌呃梗死，就突然间呃。心脏的血管阻塞了，呃，有时候突然间阻塞的特别严重，一百八千阻塞，那突然间一部分的心脏没有得到足够的那个氧气，所以它突然间心脏就失去功能，就变得特别弱了。那当然还有其他原因，包括高血压或者有一些遗传的呃家族遗传的心脏病，比如说我们说心肌肥厚，那这些都可以呃突然间造成了呃心脏衰竭。那如果说急性心脏衰竭发生了之后，那病人没有及时的去看医生，比如说呃血管阻塞的时候，那病人没有没有马上去看医生，那血管阻塞的血管没有马上用支架或者是药物打开，那那一个受伤的那一个肌那个心脏的部分呢，它就没有足够的时间康复，那就算是后来呃我们在用支架。把那个阻塞血管打开了，可是那个心脏受伤那一部分，它没有办法呃，在未来的时间完全康复，所以心病人的心脏就没有完完全呃好到康复到呃正常的的水平。那这种情况呢，我们就称它为慢性心脏衰竭，也就是说那个心脏衰竭的情况都会一直伴随那个病人。那这种情况就是说呃，它有可能呃都会一直。遭遇到那种心脏衰竭的症状，那这我刚刚已经说了哦，心脏衰竭，呃，它本身其实是一个心脏的表现，说它很弱，那它其中其实是很多原因造成它的，那最大的原因就是说，呃呃，心脏的冠状动脉阻塞，就是我们俗称的心脏病发作，就是它可能是呃一条或者是三条，呃，都突然间阻塞，所以造成了心脏的。呃，血供不足，氧气不足，所以它长期时间下来，它就变得很弱。那另外一个很大的原因就是，呃，高血压。如果血压控制的不好，那心脏也会呃慢慢的肿大，也会造成呃心脏衰竭。那当然，其他比如说瓣膜呃的失常哦，盖不紧或者太紧不能开，那这也会造成心脏衰竭的原因。那另外一块呃没有办法忽略的就是说遗传的因素，比如说家族有人呃会有遗传的心脏病，遗传的心肌肥厚，那可能他的下一代或者隔代，他呃得到这一类疾病的几率都会呃普遍上的高。那就是为什么常常会有病人来问我，呃呃来来看我的时候，我都会问他说，哎你家族有没有遗传的那个心脏病哈，或或突然死亡的病例？这点是非常重要的哦，可以让我们知道说，这个病人是不是属于那种高风险的病患。那我们所要知道的心脏病、呃心脏衰竭的症状有哪一些呢？你可以大概看一下，那最常见的症状就是呃呼吸困难，他可能一开始可能只是走一走或者跑一下觉得很喘，那如果说没有及时治疗的话，那他这种症状会加剧，那他就会。他可能走几步就开始喘，那甚至坐下来睡觉的时候也觉得很喘，那这些都是心脏衰竭的症状。那其他症状包括说，呃，一直咳嗽、干咳，或者会听到那种像气喘病的那种声音。那他会发现到他也可能发现到他脚，哎，突然间怎么就肿起来了？那他也可能觉得容易很容易累、疲倦
，那可能会觉得，哎，他心跳一直跳得很快，那这些都是在在的表示说，你的心脏可能哦，可能已经比较弱的哦，他所以他都会产生这些症状。那心脏病发作跟心脏衰竭有什么差别呢？那我刚刚已经说了。心脏病发作就是一般我们统称，呃的,的心脏病发作就表示说，突然间，其中一条或者三条的血管阻塞，那造成了呃心脏病发作，我们说的呃心肌梗塞。那病患一般都是突然间的觉得很胸闷，突然间很喘，或者冒冷汗，甚至神志不清哦，觉得很难呼吸。那这些就是呃，有可能是告诉你说你是心脏病发作的。那心脏衰竭呢，它是一个呃，其他原因造成呃，最终的一个心脏的表现。它可以是呃，心脏病发作，它也有可能是因为心跳不规律，它也有可能是血压控制的不好，而造成了这个心脏的功能减弱。所以它不一定是因为。血管阻塞，它也有可能是因为其他原因造成的。那呃，心脏衰弱一般的症状，当然气喘哈、哦，或者脚会肿。那那这些症状大部分都是慢慢慢慢形成的，它不会说突然间发生。那突然间发生，一般有几种情况，比如说这个病人的血管突然间阻塞了，心脏病发作，那他又来不及治疗，或者他拖延，那他突然间阻塞，他可能三条完全阻塞。那这一下子就马上就影响了心脏的功能啊，所以心病人心脏病发作，它同时也可能发生心脏衰竭，所以它就是心脏病发作并发急性心脏衰竭，所以它会有这种情况。那大部分心脏衰竭的情况都是慢慢发生的，所以病人会发现他脚肿一段时间了，所以这个是心脏病发作跟心脏衰竭呃不同的地方。那当一个病人来了我的诊所看我的时候，那我要怎么跟他检查？他到底，比如说他的脚肿或者他的气喘是因为心脏衰竭还是其他的原因呢？那很简单的是，呃，我可以跟他做一些呃比较特别的血液检查。哦，血液检查不但可以跟他呃来判定说他脚肿或者他气喘是不是因为心脏功能不好，或者我甚至可以帮他检查说，如果他是心脏功能不好，他是不是因为血管阻塞所造成的？哦，所以血液检查很重要。那接下来另外可以做的就是，我可以帮病人做一个心电图，呃，来看说他的心脏的心跳怎么样哦，是不是有一些心电图上显示说他有可能血管阻塞？那再来就是做一个呃胸部的 X 光，来看说他心脏有没有肿大，或者说肺部有没有积水，这个也是很重要。那接下来一个很重要的检查呢，就是呃我帮病人做 B 超，哈，就是心脏的扫描，来。这个不只能够看说他心脏的功能怎么样，我还可以看说，呃呃，有他的钙哈、哦，心肌有没有肥厚，他的瓣膜，他是不是他有是不是心脏有一部分能够解呃能够来来呃判定有没有可能血管阻塞，这些都是呃这些检查可以呃来大概呃断定的。心脏衰竭的危险因子有很多很多，那我们可以从这边看起来哦，比如说高血压。呃，或者说肥胖、糖尿病、呃，肾脏不好，那甚至有那个睡眠障碍的病人哦，然后呃，包括一些服用其他药物，比如说呃呃那些呃癌症病患的那些化疗的药物，呃，那有一些药物都可以造成心脏衰竭。那其中有一块非常重要的就是肥胖症，我觉得在呃东南亚呃这里马来西亚的。肥胖症的呃呃的几率非常高哈，在东南亚是前面几名的，所以这个非常重要。那肥胖呃，它不只能够会造成呃最终的心脏衰竭哦，你体重增加的呃的历史还可以能够基本上能够判定说你未来发生心脏衰竭的几率有多高。那我们可以来看这个例子哈，如果说一个病人他在二十岁的时候他已经得了肥胖症。体重已经超标了，那如果说他的体重一直这样维持下去呢，那可以判定说他未来哦，他有三倍的三倍高的几率会发展呃心脏衰竭，所以可见呃心脏衰呃肥胖跟心脏病和心脏衰竭有一个很直接的原因，非常重要，所以控制体重是非常重要的。那
。肥胖症它不只会造成了未来的心脏衰竭，它和其他的疾病都还有很大的关联，比如说糖尿病。那当一个病人他得了肥胖症之后呢，他除了呃身体会呃呃那些活动困难之外呢，他会增加了他身上的那个胰岛素的那个呃呃 resistant， 他就很容易发展成糖尿病。然后他的血，他的血压很容易增高，他的呃胆固醇也很容易呃不受控制。那这些呃都容易在未来发展成呃心血管疾病，比如说血管阻塞，那甚至造成呃心力不齐、心脏衰竭，甚至突然间死亡。所以你可以看见说，肥胖症是一个呃对心脏伤害非常大的一个呃一个现象。那呃，美国呃心脏协会已经呃在最近，它重新呃更正了它之前的高血压的那个定义啊、哦，所以我们可以看到说，目前呃所谓的正常的血压的收缩压，就是上面那个血压必须控制在120或者以下，那下面那个舒张压就是 diastolic 的那个 pressure， 它必须控制在80或80以下，那这才算是正常的血压水平。任何的数据在这上面以上，比如超过一百二十哈，都是，呃呃，都建议说你要呃密切的留意、呃、如果是这一继续往上升高，就可能需要呃高血压药物的治疗了。血糖的控制也非常重要，在任何时候，你的呃早上起来节食的那一个血糖必须在低于五点四，你的平均血糖水平必须低于六不六八线啊，这是非常重要的。那谈到呃治疗上面呢，我们当然知道，<咳>心脏的治疗上面可以分成呃两个部分，第一是用药物治疗，那第二当然就是我们所谓的心脏的介入治疗。那心脏的介入治疗呢，呃，有一个很重要的部分就是导管的治疗。那我们当然知道说，刚刚我说了，心脏衰竭它很其中一个很大的原因就是因为心脏的血管阻塞。那血管阻塞的，呃，当呃一个病人心脏病发作，他来医院看的时候，那一个非常重要、呃、非常紧急需要帮他检查的，就是做导管检查。它是一个小小的步骤。那我不止可以帮他看说他血管阻塞的怎么样，如果说哎发现到阻塞，可以同时用呃支架去把血管打开，那病人情况就可以呃很快就好起来了。那当然有一些情况，比如说是因为他的心率的关系造成的心脏衰竭，那他可能需要一些起搏器，那甚至一些除颤器，像 I C D、Pacemaker 或者 C R D， 来帮助心脏的功能恢复。呃，另外一个部分很重要的就是强化药物的治疗，我觉得这一方面非常重要。呃，为什么我常跟病人说，呃，你被诊断了心脏衰竭了，你必须要遵照医生的指示来吃药。那一个部分就是说，你喝水的部分那个分量必须要根据医生来决定，你一天能够喝多少水。那这个图呢，呃，是一个心脏衰竭在整个过程的的的一个演变过程。所以在左边你可以看到说，呃，一个病患，但是箭头只是说一个病患他被医生诊断心脏衰竭了。所以从那个时候开始呢，呃，他的心脏功能就不好。所以他可能接下来的几个月甚至几年。他有时候可能，比如说他喝水喝的比较多，或者他药物没有遵照医生的指示，呃，然后呃没有吃药，那他可能心脏突然间又变得很弱，那晚上可能又不能躺平，那就必须要到医院去。你可以看到说，呃，一个心脏的功能，一个病人的心脏功能，他每一次当他脚又肿、肺又积水的时候，那他必须到医院，那医生会跟他打针，让他的水排出来。当他每一次呃肺积水、脚肿的时候，他的心脏功能就会变得更弱。那虽然说他接受了治疗治疗，他可能住院了几天哦，可是当他出院的时候，虽然说他脚已经没肿了，他的肺的水已经可能都已经干掉了，可是他心脏的功能没有办法恢复到之前的水平。所以如果说呃你没有好好控制你喝水的分量，呃你没有遵照医生的指示吃药的话，那接下来可能几个月。又会发生同样的事情。那每一次，当你的心脏，呃，呃，当你肺积水，然后脚肿的时候，那你的心脏就会变得更弱。每一次你住院的时候，哦，心脏就会变得更弱。那当你出院的时候，他心脏好不到原来的水平。所以你可以看到说，在接下来几年，如果你频繁的
又发作了，呃，心脏衰竭，又一直住院，一直积水的话，那你的心脏的功能其实是越来越差的。这个就为什么我们回到之前，我有说过，有一超过一半的病患，心脏衰竭的病患，他在诊断的五年里面就会不幸去世，就是因为这个原因，因为中间他可能发生其他的事情，哦，喝水过量或者药可能没有呃定时吃药，所以他一直频繁的呃。发作，所以造成他到最后他的心脏功能到了一个没有办法治疗的一个地步。我觉得这非常重要。那我们刚刚提到了那个心脏呃衰竭的危险因子，那当然还有其他的啊、呃，比如说过量的那个摄取酒精，或者是过量的抽烟，那吃东西太咸，这些都呃容易造成心脏衰竭哈。所以呃，当我们谈到治疗，呃，当然我们呃很大的一部分很重要的就是说我们怎样去。预防呃未来发生心脏衰竭的几率，那当然良好的生活习惯非常重要，包括呃食物，那、呃、当吃东西的话，平衡饮食非常重要的，多吃蔬菜水果，然后减少那些呃已经呃 processed 的一些一些一些一些呃加工的食品啊、呃，或者呃吃太甜的饮料，这些都是要尽量避免的。所以那另外就是。不要抽烟啊！我觉得你去看医生的时候，不管是在心脏或者是其他呃健康方面，医生都会说、呃、少抽烟哦，最好是能戒掉，这非常重要。那另外一个呃固定的运动，那世界卫生组织已经定义说，如果你一个礼拜可以呃快走一百五十分钟，也就是说大概呃每一天跑三十分钟，呃走快走三十分钟，呃跑五天走五天那就足够了。或者如果如果你是跑步的话。那你一天呃跑二十五分钟，呃一个礼拜有三天，那就基本上就能足够对你的照顾你的心脏。那当然我们活在现在呃这环境里面哦，那压力是一个很重要的因素。那当然研究也显示说，呃如果说压力长期处于高压的那种呃环境的的的人，他比较。容易在未来患上心脏病或者呃心脏衰竭的几率，所以这一个呃是一个很好让你自己检查说你有没有呃心脏衰竭的这些症状。那比如说你有没有觉得你自己最近好像比较容易很动不动就很喘，那或者你觉得你的呃运动呃能力越来越下降，那也发现到你的脚有没有肿，那或者说你的体重在最近一直在增加，虽然说你的食量已定。或者有没有胸闷、胸痛的这些症状啊？如果都没有的话，很好，要继续保持它。那如果你发现到你有这些症状呢，就呃赶快去看你的家庭医生，或者呃可以到心脏科医生呃来帮你看一下说，说那你这些症状是不是因为心脏衰竭的一些表现啊？如果说呃这个症状呃再持续下去，它可能会造成呃越来越严重的情况，比如说呃我连坐着也突然觉得很喘。那晚上睡觉我都不能躺平，我必须要，呃，两三个枕头，甚至坐起来才能够睡得着。躺下去我觉得很喘，那这些都是在在在告诉你说，你的心脏功能可能变弱了，你都不能躺平。那这些都是呃，告诉你说，呃，你赶快要看医生了。那如果发现你的脚哦越来越肿都不会消，呃，我觉得就赶快要去看医生。那所以总结一下啊，如果说心脏衰竭呢，它是一个心脏它的 pump 的 failure 一个现象，它可以是其他原因造成的，比如说最常见的是血管阻塞造成的。那第一，首先我们很重要的是要讲去预防心脏衰竭，那就是保持良好的生活习惯哈，包治包括就是不要抽烟啊，呃，不要酗酒，然后健康的饮食，降低你的压力的程度。那当你发现到自己有一些不太对的时候，一些症状的时候，早一点就医看医生哦。比如说我发现到最近有点喘，或者脚有点肿，胸口有点闷，早一点看医生啊，及早发现，治疗效果都是很好的哦。有时候甚至可以完全治愈。那当你呃及早发现了之后呢，那及早治疗也是非常重要的啊。有一些病患来看的时候，哎，医生跟你说，哦，你心脏可能有点阻塞哦，要早一点检查。有些病人甚至觉得。啊，不需要了，再再等多几个月吧。哦，我觉得当医生只是你说，哎，你可能有这些症状，我觉得及早发现、及早治疗，那痊愈的几率就非常高哈、哦。不管是任何疾病都好。所以当你呃被医生诊断了一些疾病之后呢，你当然会有一些药物呃要服用的。那很重要就是遵照医生的指示吃药。那如果说医生跟你说，呃，你的水分一天只能够喝一 l 的，那你就
尽量保持在一厘得不要超过啊，这非常重要。那当然之后呃，你要呃固定的去 follow up。那有一些如果是你产生了对药的一些副作用，最常见比如说胃痛哦、头晕、头痛，不要自己停药。去看你的医生，或者是跟你的心脏医生联络一下，看说呃是不是因为药物造成的，有没有其他药可以代替，呃不要自己停，我觉得这非常重要的。所以如果你有任何任何疑问的话，你可以呃到那个呃金宝林医药中心呃随时联络我，电话或者是 email。所以呃谢谢大家。